What is the guest access strategy for your organization? And please don't tell me that it's just a pre-shared key that someone wrote on the whiteboard. We both know that key will not be changed anytime soon. There are better ways to do things. And using Cisco Identity Services Engine, you can set up a proper guest flow for your organization. It's customizable, and there are different options that'll fit your business. So if you are a QSR, if you're in retail, if you're manufacturing, there are different options that might be a better fit for you for your guest flow. Today, we're going to take a look at a sponsored portal. This is somebody who creates the accounts prior to those guests showing up, or perhaps they show up, but somebody has to create the accounts for them. So this is not a self-registration, and this is definitely not a pre-shared key. So let's take a look at Guest Flow with Cisco Identity Services Engine. You always have to take a look and see what is the guest flow that fits your organization. Like I mentioned, quick service restaurants and manufacturing two totally different types of businesses. So the people that approach perhaps retail or QSR, there's going to be dozens and thousands of people approaching that are guests. You're not going to sit there and create guest accounts for each of them. So that is a different animal. On the other hand, perhaps in manufacturing, you have people that are visiting, that are visiting your warehouses, the plant. You're going to know who these people are in advance. So somebody might create those guest accounts, and hopefully they're not getting the pre-shared key off the whiteboard in your conference room. So today, we're going to take a look at a sponsored setup. And because of the work sensors that we have in Cisco Identity Services Engine, it's an easy setup. But let's explore some of the components today. I already have a guest SSID that I created in the lab and I deployed. So we're going to take a look at creating a guest account as a sponsor. And then we're simply going to log in to the portal that we have created. And I haven't changed any of the defaults, but the beautiful thing here is that it's very customizable. You want to put your logo out there. You want to change the colors. You want to do different things. It's up to you. It's up to your organization. So let's take a look at work centers. And we'll see that we have a guest access work center here. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at portals and components. You'll notice that we have a couple of options here. Uh, what I want to look at today is the sponsored guest portal. And you can see there that that's the one that's in use. There are some authorization rules that are already out there that we're going to take a look at. Uh, but before we do that, the, the first thing that happens is that guest accounts get created. The sponsor has to go in and create an account for a guest. And that's a separate portal. So you're going to have your sponsors, your administrators, log into a separate portal that is an identity services engine in the PSNs. And they're going to be able to create accounts. You can automate. You can do several different things. Today, I'm just going to create a very simple account that I'm going to use to log in. Uh, we'll go over to Sponsor Portals, just so you can see a couple of things before we actually create the accounts. Sponsor Portal default, I'm not doing that much work in my lab here, but in your organization, you might want to create a completely different portal that you customize. But let's take a look at what this looks like in the Sponsor Portal flow, because even for the sponsor, you can have a different flow for them as well. As you can see here, of course, you can name things. On the right side, you can see that flow. What's going to happen? Going to log in. There's going to be an accept, uh, acceptable use policy that, that the person takes a look at. There's going to be a post login banner. And finally, they're there. So that's it's a pretty simple flow. I'm not doing much. But all of this, you control in here. If you want a maximum failed login attempts, you, you can change all those things here. So feel free to play around with the settings, customize it to your liking, to the liking of your organization and to your standards. But the first thing you do is you set up this portal. This portal's out there. So what I want to do, the, the portal's out there. Let's go over to my URL here. So this is the, the sponsor portal that I have. I'm going to log in with the account that I have in my, my lab's Active Directory. All right. And of course, you know, please be mindful in account creation. Do not give more access than needed. So that's, you know, the little banner that I threw up there. And, and let's create an account. You have several options. 
S depending on the guest, this might be a contractor who might need a year's worth of access, six months worth of access, or perhaps it's just somebody who's coming to visit your facility for the day. That's a, a daily access or somebody who's going to be there for the week. There are different types of access that you can set up and you can go back into ICE and customize these guest types as well and do different things under each guest type that you want to be a default. Uh, so now guest information, let's fill this out. Uh, we're going to do uh, guesty McGuest. There we go. Guesty McGuest. Uh, GMG at guest.com. All right. GMG at guest.com. Uh, we'll, we'll say company three. And of course, the person v they're being, they're visiting. Uh, that's there we go all right they're visiting me reason for the visit lunch let's just throw that in there how long do we want this access so i want to make sure this thing starts starts working now so let's just toss this back a couple of hours and again it's, it's a day so we'll, we'll leave that alone but this is customizable again and there's different guest types that you if you want certain defaults out there all right, so we have that, and let's create. So now we have some information here. This is important because this is going to be a default password that gets changed, right? So this 3800 is default. We have GMC guest as the username. Uh, let's take a screenshot of this. So I don't forget. And the account has been created. Let's make sure that this account is ready to go. I think we're in good shape. Nothing to do here. Let's just click at it. I just want to make sure there's nothing that is disabled. I think we're in good shape. So now let's close this out. So we have our, our user account information here. I'm pulling up on another screen just so I don't forget. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect to my uh, guest SSID. So we'll go over, over to other networks. We have a lab guest. That's a separate SSID that I created. And I do have a pre-shared key here uh, simply because I just don't want randos connecting to, to my uh, network here at home. So we'll click join. It's doing its thing. I should be redirected now. There we go. Uh, so my username, GMC guest, and the password is at 3800. There's the acceptable use policy. Of course, you can customize that. Let's click accept. 3800, and we'll change this. All right. There we go. So I'm changing my password in case I need to. Ah, all right. Well, there's some complexities there. Let me change that again. Can't make it that easy. There we go. So welcome, continue. And in this process, if you wanted to, uh, to explore the health of the guest, Last week, we took a look at uh, posture. If you wanted to deploy a temporary agent in some situations, you could do those things as well. So this can be as, as complicated as you want. And as you can see here, um, you have an option to redirect them to a certain page. This is the, the blog that I redirected them to. Uh, so so we're, we're in good shape. I am still connected. And we'll just go to yahoo.com. Perfect. Now let's go back to ICE though, uh, because I do want to explore the policy. We'll go over to policy, policy sets. And what I did in the SSID is that this is, uh, the settings need to be MAB, so MAC address bypass settings, but that's not really what I'm doing here. I'm redirecting this user using Cisco ICE, I'm redirecting them to, to the captive portal. So they have nowhere to go until they authenticate. Uh, let's explore this policy. 
The one thing to call out here in the authentication policy that I did change is that if the user is not found, continue. If I didn't do that, I really wouldn't get redirected. I'd pretty much be dropped at that point. The user won't be found. That MAC address is new. So let's continue. So that's the change under the authentication policy. And then we have the authorization policy. And, and what I did here is that I have a sponsored guest redirect. So it's wireless map. And I'm looking specifically for my SSID. So that lab underscore guest is the SSID. Somebody that connects there, we're going to do this, this Cisco web off, this redirect. And we'll take a look at what that looks like in a second. Pretty much using the defaults in our ICE. Now, once you authenticate, then you're going through the guest flow and your permitted access. It's very simple. Really, the, more, the most complicated piece of this is creating the SSIDs, making sure that the actual redirect is working so that you're sending the right information back to your wireless controller. And let's take a look at, at what goes back to the wireless controller. We'll go to Policy and Results, Authorization, and Authorization Profiles. And we'll see here again, you can create as many of these as you like, but I pretty much used the defaults that were in ICE. So there was already a Cisco web off uh, in here. We'll let that load. It's an access accept. And really, this is where you come in if you want to send a, a DACL back, if you want to customize things further. Uh, but what I'm doing here is just saying, hey, to the, to the wireless controller, this is the ACL guest redirect ACL, and that ACL matches the wireless controller. At that point, the user's redirected. They have to authenticate. Once they authenticate, they're redirected to where, where uh, they were originally supposed to go or to a certain page. Uh, you have total control. But what I wanted to show everybody today is that these are great options under Identity Services Engine. No longer do you have to just rely on the pre-shared key. There are more things that you can do to ensure that there's a proper, safe guest flow that is also protecting your organization. Let's take a look at operations and live logs. And we'll just see uh, GMC guest there. Uh, guest, guesty McGuest uh, was able to authenticate. And if we take a look at this, we'll see that that's the authorization policy. So just confirming everything looks good here. Uh, but it, it's that it's that easy, really. Uh, the important lesson today is you can do more with the tools that you have. Guest flow is not something that should be scary to your organization. Take a look at what you can do with Cisco Identity Services Engine. I'll see you on the next one.